the Whiskey Vote. I'm Daniel. I'm Rex, and it's a, you know. It's my next. You know. Yeah. So, don't act like you don't. We've got three, the next three days we're gonna do uh, whiskeys from Jay Merritt. Jay Merritt, you magnificent. <laughs> We'll do that again every day. Right. However, I'm only gonna read the note one time. He wrote us a note. Okay. Do you wanna read the note while I pour? So we're not gonna read it in triplicate? No. Dear Daniel and <laughs> Rex. Did you get the memo? Greetings and salutations, you beautiful bastards. I wanted to thank you both for teaching me so much and giving me hours, well, maybe minutes, <laughs> of gut-busting laughter. I no. absolutely love watching all your reviews and the tribe videos are amazing. I've gotten my wonderful wife to start watching these reviews with me as nice. we sip on some lovely whiskey of our own. I hope you enjoy these meager offerings of my fidelity to the tribe and the ever-growing <laughs> collection to the vault. Sincerely yours, Matt Merritt. Thank you. P.S. Daniel, remember to listen to Rex a bit more. He knows what the people want. Speaking of Skullet. Wait, no. <laughs> How did you go straight to that? Oh, it was on the, someone posted it to Facebook. Because that's what people want. There was a meme on Facebook. And that's it was Bozo the Clown. All right, this is Lone Rider Spirits, yes. which uh, started out of Lone Rider Brewing Company. Okay. So, once okay. again, yeah, yeah, yeah. beer guys. All right, here's the thing with whiskey. beer guys. Here's the thing with beer guys. And it, 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 okay. it doesn't smell like you think. I won't even give it context. Ow. More often than not, I would say, I don't know, it feels about three out of four times whenever a brewery dabbles in whiskey, it very often kind of tastes like an afterthought that it's not their specialty. But there are occasionally, you know what, you know, a meaningful number of times a brewery will knock one out of the park. Hopefully this doesn't smell and taste like an afterthought. What do you think? This is a bourbon. Okay. Now, uh, this is a bourbon specifically finished in sherry casks. Oh. Oh. 45% alcohol. That, uh... Beautiful floral velvety oak. Oh, yeah, it's great. Wow. This the... is none of the things I was expecting from yeah. something that was brewery turned distillery. I, I never would have guessed this is uh, people who specialize in a beer, or some other type of, of spirit, trying their hand at a whiskey. On the nose, this is a perfectly lovely whiskey. What was the proof on that? Did 45. You... 45? I okay. mean, well, eight, you know, 90. It's 45 yeah, yeah, yeah. snuggle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, man. Okay, so. Yeah, it's I'm just... getting that really strong classic bourbon cherry note, but I'm also getting this like musty, funky sherry note at okay. the same time. Okay, okay. The word I keep coming back to is velvety. It feels like there's just, there's a density to these notes, but it has like a soft edge all the way around it. It's like a candied cherry. Yeah. Not like the cheap maraschino ones, but like the real right, right. maraschino cherries where they're like dark, yeah. sweet. And the floral does eventually start to unfold into more of that cherry note. And now, now it's unfurling. I'm getting the wood accent. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very last in the nose. Oh, oh, I'm, uh, I'm starting to get a little bit of um, the vanilla creeping out from behind that. Ooh. This is, it's even complex. on the nose, usually on the taste, you have to go back to it several times and it starts to change up. Even just on the nose of this thing, you're going uh, back multiple times and it's, it's uh, evolving. It's evolving. Uh -huh. I figured out why. <laughs> this is MGP. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is like... I was like, holy crap! We are fans of this. Yeah, yeah this is a, like, well done. They're finishing MGP just like... just like. So, you said they finished it in a barrel. sherry? Sherry cast. Oh, the sherry is a super popular finish. Okay. Not typically for bourbon, though. Oh, I really like that. Wow. It Ooh. gives this weird... It's like a... Like a s sweet walnutiness. Yeah, that's what I was about to say, walnut. Yeah. This kind of like, it almost... Reminds me of Dalmore. I like what happens to MGP whenever it's finished in cherry. Holy crap! Yeah, that's notes lovely. itself. Do we know which ma they have a bunch of different mash bills? Do we know which? No, I just said distilled in Indiana. Okay, all right. That's, and uh, now the bummer is <laughs> hold on, on the marketing. Hold on, hold on, hold yeah, on, hold on, because this is big build up. Brewery is usually an afterthought. It's like, oh, this is amazing. This is great. It's not an afterthought at all. Oh, they bought it. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm leaving that for the reveal. Well, they bought a lovely one. Yes, they did. And, and the sherry cask was a good choice. It was a brilliant choice. Uh, I am surprised we haven't had a lot more MGP bottlings finished in a sherry. Well, it's very common in scotch. It's not that common in bourbon. Yeah. Um, the, the only regretful thing I read in an interview that I saw with this guy, Chris Milk, uh, Milk, Milk? Anyway, the guy who started up the Lone Rider Spirits, was yep. he said, we're making whiskey for a new audience of modern whiskey drinkers. What is that? It doesn't actually mean anything, that sentence. 
But, I don't know, to a journalist who isn't in the whiskey scene, it's a quotable. That's really freaking exciting. Yeah. It's like, yes. Yeah. That thing that doesn't mean anything sounds exciting. Do you want to do you want to go off script and compare this to Dalmore? Hold on. The obvious comparison. Sherry cask. The obvious comparison yeah. is an MGP that hasn't had that that bit of finishing in yeah, the sherry. Yeah, we can do that too. Okay. But okay. we we have okay. regularly been comparing to the MGP bourbons. Right. But I want to see specifically what is that sherry doing? Hey, while I gotta remember. While you. Not remember. Hugo de Villiers. I think I got that. Look at that. Hugo de Villiers. Sure. Help! I think I broke my nose. Okay. Have any of you locked yourself in on a single note before? I managed to find a massive, fresh spooned right out of the fruit gran granadilla note? Granadilla? What is granadilla note? On the Glenmorangie original New Year's Eve. I said, just sat losing myself in that delightful smell for hours. Now, like, uh, now all I get is that one note dominating my whiskeys. What yeah. What is grenadilla? Do you know what this is? I wonder if it meant grenadine. Oh, fruit grenadilla. No. Grenadilla. Fruit. I don't know what fruit, fruit grenadilla is. Fruit grenadilla. Let's look it up. Fruit, first word, grenadilla, G-R-A-N-A-D-I-L-L-A. -L -L Looks like granadilla, but <laughs> probably not granadilla. Now, all you get is that same Glenmorangie. It's the same note with the Glenmorangie. Old Pulteney, Old Pulteney 12, Old Pulteney, Old Pulteney 12, and this random quiet man single malt I happened upon. How do I get around this? Do I just stay away from single malt for a time or what? Hashtag legit worry. Yeah, it's a uh, passion fruit category <laughs> okay. of things. Yeah. So my question is, I'd like to try that. I way. could totally see that in space sites. Mm -hmm. Start uh, switch over to some island whiskeys. Mm -hmm. Not straight into Isla, but island like Oban and or um, Oban's Highland, but right. Talisker uh, uh, and things like Tobermory, the unpeated, right. right? And and see what happens. And see if when you come back to it, it's that sweet fruity note that we often yeah. floral fruity note we often get in some space side Highlands. Um, I, I found George Remus, which is the straight bourbon made at NGP okay. that they released as their you know as, its own kind of thing. What was the, uh, the ABV? I don't know what the mash bill is, but the ABB is 47, which is 40, close. Oh, to yeah. Yeah, it's almost, almost bang on. All right, all right, here we go. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Within swinging distance of each other. Yeah, but the sherry, the sherry distinctly improved it. It did. It added those, it added those nice little extra layers. I wonder if adding a little bit of water. Uh, we'll separate the sherry finish from the bourbon. As you add water, we'll give it a moment. Sharon Foley's. Does anyone know what might cause a vomit taste in mm. the whiskey? Yes, I know what you're talking about. A lot of people get that monkey shoulder. And they what? say, yes, a lot of people get that monkey shoulder. I tried Oban 14 on two occasions, and both times I've experienced a brief taste that reminds me of vomit. Mm -hmm. It smells and tastes fine otherwise. I think I'll stay away from that Oban. Uh, anybody else have similar experiences with other whiskeys? Sharon, I've never had that across any whiskey. Sharon, try Monkey Shoulder and see if you see it there. Right. Because I think what she might be talking about is that heavy malt, musky well, obvious, funkiness. Obviously, don't invest in a bottle to try and get a note you don't like. It's available in... A, yeah, you, you can know, buy Monkey Shoulder at a bar, bar at most bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think she might be referring to that malty funk that we get, like a heavy, heavy malt impact on a yeah. scotch. I think her, it's like, you know, some people do soap, uh, what's right. the, what's the plant that people, some people think is soapy? Oh, um, the, uh, it's a green, it's, uh, on Mexican food. Oh my God. Can't... It's, uh. <laughs> right? Hold on. Oh my God. I had this for lunch. I ate this. <sighs> so I keep wanting to say quesadilla. It's not quesadilla. <laughs> Cilantro. Thank you. Jeez. <laughs> How did that happen? We just had a, we just froze. Yeah. Uh, cilantro, you know, some people interpret that as soapy. Right. And others don't. I think it, there's a certain category of people who interpret the malt funk really as a vomity taste. I want to throw up like you people. That I want to throw up open fourteen when that I. That is up. delightful. <laughs> Just puke my guts out. Start giving notes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so okay, yes. there's a little water. Wait, good, try it again. So far, good call. This may take. Uh, how much water did you add, by the way? Drop. Mm. Oh, it got chocolatey. That's weird. I like it better, even. It yeah. got this weird chocolate note in there. And the more I live with this... The like bitter chocolate. The more I live with this and I'm acclimating to the flavors, 
the more it's presenting in general as a nice, like a sweet tea type of note. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I, I mean, well done. Yeah. And good job well, putting it on there. You distilled it. I mean, they're uh, totally above board. Can you tell we like MGP products? Dude, MGP right. makes remarkable whiskey. Yeah, they do. They yeah. Do. They do. All right. Oh, wait, wait. This Friday oh. starts dry week. That is... So we're uh, taking a week off of making content from the 1st? Starts Friday the 31st of January okay. at, at noon. January 31st? Yeah, at noon. Two. Goes all the way through noon the following Friday, which is February 7th. February 7th. Yeah. All right. And we'll be hanging out in social groups and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Not drinking whiskey. If you want to join us for the quarterly challenge this dry week, we do four times a year. Then at the end, you can put your name on the list of the hallowed. List of honorable whiskey challengers. That's right. They just took a break uh, from drinking just to for make me. sure there's no issue sneaking up on them there. Just to be intentional about how much you're intaking on a day-to-day -day basis. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. If you steal me, you steal your liver side. And if you drink, may you drink, drink with us. us.